can I can absolutely um, you know I can move the slides now after you have submitted your application um, can you hear me now am I audible yes okay thank you you guys have been such a wonderful audience you you've been very patient you guys you can hear me you don't hear an echo you should be fine now lovely okay yeah I think I've, I've taken care of that now thank you so much okay so I don't think you'll be you can hear an echo anymore can you hear me clearly can you hear me? okay lovely sorry sorry about all these problems um, so Education USA is a US state department supported network of advising centers we provide accurate current and comprehensive information to US higher education institutions about studying in the uh, about US higher education institutions and the application process to students parents and academicians uh, there are hundreds of Education USA advising centers across uh, 170 countries uh, and in India we have seven Education USA advising centers um, you know, so once you've submitted your applications, it's critical that you print a copy of your application, keep it for your record. Um, every application will have a unique ID and uh, it would be important for you to um, retain that. So whatever communication you do with your university, whether it's for housing, whether it's related to getting an I-20, uh, should be with the unique ID. Um, if you do not have one, please check your spam email. Uh, if you have issues problems getting their ID please get in touch with the university now that's that's quite preliminary stuff um, so check the application status you should have submitted everything that is required as part of your application um, any items that you need to send through post like transcripts um, um, you can you're very welcome to use that Documents that arrive by fax or mail are processed and uploaded as an electronic document and hence it may take little time uh, online documents, as is obvious, tends to take lesser time uh, for showing updated status. Once you've completed a to-do list, once you've completed your entire to-do list, um, it'll, you know, you, if once you've com completed everything and submitted every document, it will, you know, there will be a green tick mark against every submission required. What can you update after the application is submitted? You know, sometimes you have to update transcripts. Uh, for example, you may have got your final official transcripts. After the submission of your application, you can update that. Um, you can, you know, um, if you have, if you were in the process of writing a research or a publication paper um, and it has been just published, you can, um, you can update uh, it on your application or inform the undergraduate or the graduate admissions committee about it or your advisor. Uh, if you've got a notable award or a prize and you think that will have an impact on your application or financial aid offer, then inform the university about that. Any other noteworthy achievement which will impact the decision related to your applications, um, you should update your university about. Um, even if you've got an offer of admission and you've got your, say, grade 12 scores or you've got your IB scores or you've got your um, undergraduate or master's scores, do make it a point to inform universities about it. Some universities allow for updates and personal information. So maybe your address has undergone a change. Inform your university about it. Um, in addition to that, uh, for undergraduate applications, maintain concentration on your CBSC, ISE, IB exams are going on, so make sure you don't lose track of those. Do not slack in your performance for Indian institutions, even if you got admitted to a US university. Parents, it's important to start thinking about and start actually organizing financial documents. So uh, if you have to move funds from one particular um, for, you know, investment portfolio, um, you know, make sure that you um, uh, in, in make sure you're doing that into another account. Or in case you have to apply for loans and get loan sanction letters, education loan san sanction letters, um, uh, please make sure that uh, you know that this is the time that that's going to that's going to happen. 
Uh, also, I mean, when you're going to a U.S. university, you're going from a very different um, education system. You're going from a very different education system, so you need to prep yourself up for it. Um, so it's it's a very good idea to really invest time in in taking up massive online open courses. These are courses that some of the best universities across the world offer on different kind of uh, online platforms. For example, there's Coursera, there is edX. So update your knowledge and skills in diverse areas and disciplines and this is just one way you can do that among many other things that students um, get involved in so um, you know brushing up your academic writing skills um, getting some uh, doing some courses on statistical analysis or research if you're interested in history there are courses related to history if you're a science technology engineering or math student and you want to invest time in uh, brushing your skills in programming or coding. There are a lot of courses on these amazing platforms, Coursera, edX, Udemy, that give you that uh, content from a very good university. So prep yourself up and prep yourself up for success when you go to a US university. Um, ensure your files are complete and please, please check on all that. Right, so academically for graduate applicants, keep up to date with the latest at your department. So if you've not had the time to really read enough about uh, faculty's um, research areas, their publications, or what is the department as a whole or the College of Engineering in your particular stream working on, what are their industry tie-ups, what, the kind of, what is the kind of knowledge, what is the kind of, uh, you, know, uh, you know, new discoveries they're contributing in your field. This is the time to really brush up, read the websites thoroughly, and get a hang on those, hang of those things. Um, also keep in touch with the latest in your fields, read uh, you know, good journals in your area of, uh, uh, in your academic area. Uh, keep in touch with faculty only if you've already been in touch with them. Um, if the admission decisions are pending, don't just suddenly start getting in touch with them. This may be in misinterpreted. However, if your decision, admission decisions are out, you've been selected, and you want to, you're seriously considering that university, it is not a problem, um, you know, to actually uh, get in touch with faculty members. Then, um, one of my students, I, I'm, I'm, my name is Anubhuti, and I work for the New Delhi office. One of my students, who's actually a gap year student, after high school he took a gap year. He is uh, going to Knox College, and he is in touch with faculty there about his research interests that converge with that of the faculty members. So it's a good idea to do that if you have anything particular to discuss with faculty members. Upgrade your relevant software skills. I think it's easier to learn some of those software skills in India because you have access to coaching centers and other facilities. Uh, you can get a little more uh, support in India when it comes to acquiring some of these new skills and you know accessibility to training institutes. Um, so uh, make use of those and you know upgrade yourself in terms of software, uh, knowledge of software. And as I said on the previous slide, it applies for graduate applicants also. Take an online college writing course on Coursera or edX or Udemy or any of the other um, massive online open courses. Ensure your files are complete and check them up. Um, so this is a stage where most of you, a lot of you have already got your offers of admission or, um, or you know, you just, uh, you know, you've just got like maybe four or five offers of admission and you want to choose between them. So this is a time when you need to draw up a comparison chart. If you have multiple admissions, compare the strengths and the weaknesses of every institution. You may want to even compare the costs associated uh, of, of studying at these various institutions. Cheaper is not necessarily always the better. Don't confuse, um, you know, a bargain with good value. Um, so always go for a good value, um, a product or a service that gives you greater value than just necessarily going for something that is cheaper or a bargain. I compare the syllabi, the course offering, the specialization requirements of each department. Look at the employment statistics um, of the different universities that you've got admission to, the specific department that you'll be going to. Approach a, a range of banks. If you're, for example, uh, considering education loans, 
uh, figure out if there's a possibility of getting a US-based education loan and you have a relative, close relative in the US who's willing to vouch for you and offer you, um, you know, is willing to be your uh, co-signer or willing to take the loan on your behalf. Uh, they tend to be cheaper. Consider going to different banks in India, finding out what kind of um, interest rates they have to offer. Keep researching scholarships, fellowships, and other opportunities for financial aid available at your university. Any kind of grants available, any kind of special funding available. Uh, for example, I was this morning reading about Colby College and how through a grant that an alumnus of uh, Colby has given, uh, all, all students, including international students, will have access to a free um, study abroad opportunities. So look out for, for those details now that you have the time to do it. Familiarize yourself with university websites. Um, it's, it helps you in the final decision on where exactly you would go. Um, research the university's website thoroughly. U.S. university websites are, uh, are uh, mindful of information. Uh, check out the key policies and services. Take a virtual tour of the campuses that you've got admission into. Research course, course options. Get in touch with student ambassadors. Email IDs can be provided by um, the point person that you've been communicating with at your universities and colleges. You can request them and say that you'd like to speak to a student ambassador or a current student from, say, South Asia uh, about the experience of studying at that university. And universities are generally helpful and willing to support students and make those connections. Get familiar with the course structure and readings uh, so you're on top of things. Some of my students have also informed me that they've already been given you know, some coursework by the university to complete online, like, uh, you know, that happens for both undergraduate and graduate students. Not every university requires that, but some universities give students some uh, work to do before, uh, or some online courses to complete that they are offering before they step on campus. So check out if there's anything you can do of that kind. Personally, contact Indian students at universities, get feedback about local conditions, accommodation, transportation facilities, compare different accommodation options. And it's very important to be mindful of safety. So if you're going as an undergraduate, it is advisable. I mean, of course, this advice is subjective, but it is advisable to make sure that you're living on, on campus because uh, on-campus facilities tend, generally tend to be more safe for students. So this is not to say that external uh, facilities are not safe, but if you're going as an undergraduate student traveling for the first time or living for an extended period of time uh, for the first time in a foreign country, you might benefit from living on campus to begin with, at least for the first or the second year, the junior, the freshman or the, and the sophomore year. There are Indian student associations that are very active on campus and um, you know you can sign up on their listservs to get regular email updates. You can also join Facebook pages of um, you know formed by students and often by universities for the uh, for the new um, you know students who will be starting uh, studies at that particular university and at that particular program. So you can network with people, you can chat with them, figure out who your roommates will be. Um, you can do that kind of those kind of uh, you can do that kind of research. Archive all your own documents, so your passport, your um, your other key educational documents, your service fee receipt, your I twenty, uh, all those kind of things. You should keep a scanned copy and make sure someone at home has them. Um, so uh, student insurance is one thing, health insurance is one thing when you go on campus. There is also travel insurance. So maybe you would want to invest in travel insurance that insures you during the travel period. So you could also explore which are the Indian companies offering travel insurance to you, for you. Right, personally, get all your vaccinations done. So when you're going to university, universities expect that you can, you should get some vaccinations done before you step on campus or you get an x-ray done. So uh, figure out, um, you know, what vaccinations you'd have to do and who would be the approved healthcare provider to get those vaccinations from. 
learn cooking i mean it's always a good idea to know how to cook things that you love you may i mean you're going to the us you should be exploring different cuisines you should be exploring almost everything diff different attitudes and food nevertheless is one of those things that you uh, you know you get exposed to different kinds of cuisines in the us it's a very multicultural country it's a land land of immigrants it's a multi melting pot of cultures but you might want to um, you know entertain and socialize or be part of um, you know events where um, um, you know where, where you want to sort of put up Indian in you know put up a show of Indian cuisine so uh, you may want to get those things uh, you may want to therefore learn some cooking financially make a financial plan you should have a plan of what is the amount of money you would need in the first year and for the subsequent years of education. Where is that uh, money going to come from? What kind of interest rates would you have to pay, pay for? Account for tuition inflation per year at the rate 5 to 10%. Um, assess available resources. Are they going to be enough? Um, you should be doing that earlier as well, but if you haven't done this kind of financial planning, it's about time that you do that. Research your other finance options, research organizations offering scholarships, interest-free loans, education loans, we talked about meet bank managers to understand formalities for loans, um, you know, repayment periods, when does the payment start, what are the interest rates, assess personal collateral available to you, both movable and immovable assets. So what kind of liquid assets do you, do you have or your family has? What kind of immovable or property-based assets or, or precious metal assets you have or for, that are disposable towards your education? When would you be, you know, when would you actually be using them? At, you know, at what stages would you be using them? If you if you need to sell your property and for your for funding the subsequent years of your education, uh, you know get your property assessed and figure out how long will it take for you to take for your family to sell it off. When would you be needing the funds? Make sure every member in your family is aware uh, of uh, when when would you have when you when would you, when would you need fun, funds exactly? Uh, keep track of your sources of money and transactions. And it's actually not a bad time to be learning about financial literacy and, you know, doing a little bit of math around your, um, you know, your spending and your savings. Um, when you are in the U.S., make sure that, you know, you are on a day-to-day -day basis accounting for the kind of monies you're spending. You're taking into account your spending habits uh, and your consumables and, you know, that you are being, you are on budget and you're not, uh, you know, at, towards the end uh, in a stressful situation. The cost of attendance, um, um, you know, you need to look at um, the cost of attending different universities if you haven't already chosen the university. The cost of attendance would include your tuition and fee and your living costs. So your tuition and fee would include your educational instruction fee, facilities, lab equipment, libraries, library fee, um, books and stuff would be a part of your living costs, room and board, transportational transportation personal expenses health insurance any travel plans that you have that would be part of your living costs and costs will vary depending on which school you're going to uh, effective uh, effective research and planning can make education in the US affordable uh, so make sure that you know you have taken into account and you do an assessment of your uh, family's financial situation uh, with the total cost of attendance uh, of, of attending a U.S. university year on year for the entire duration of your program. Right, putting your proof, proof of finances together. It's that time of the year when students are required to, um, you know, put their finances together and you know put proof of finances together to get an I-20. I know that some of you already applied for an I-20 and some of you may have already received your I-20. But with those of you who have not, uh, be sure to know uh, you know what, what would be the exact cost of attendance. Putting together the required funds is a joint effort between the student and his or her family. The US government requires that all admitted students uh, must provide proof of ability to pay for tuition and living expenses for the first year and that they have a plan of a very concrete plan of payment for the subsequent years. The proof of ability to pay is inextricably linked to obtaining an official letter of acceptance to attend a US university. So you cannot get an I-20 and an official
Can you hear me now? Can you hear me? Hello? 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 Okay. All right. Um, so I was talking about putting your finances together and just a quick recap. It's that time of the year when students need to present proof of finances to the university they, they seek admission to. Uh, the US government requires all admitted international students must provide proof of ability to pay for tuition and living expenses. Uh, the proof of ability to pay for the first year of your education and have a concrete plan for the subsequent years is inextricably linked to obtaining an official letter of acceptance at a US university. After receiving all requisite materials, US universities issue an I-20 or a DS-2019 documents to students. It is with this I-20 or DS-2019 that you then apply for a student visa. Right, uh, so um, proof of finances, financial evidence support should cover the cost of studying the university for one entire year, as I said. It should factor in any financial aid provided by the university or external agency. So suppose you apply to University X and the cost of attendance is $50,000 there for the first year. The university is providing you $25,000 as scholarship and the remaining $25,000 is what you need to account for, for the first year of your, uh, of your attending attendance of the program. So the I-20 that you receive will, will, will clearly state that, that $25,000 is what you are getting as scholarship and another $25,000 is what you are arranging uh, um, through your family finances, uh, family uh, finances and investments. Check for university specific format or forms that need to be filled to demonstrate your evidence of financial capability. Uh, universities typically have a form where the guarantor, your parent or a close relative needs to sign or a scholarship giving organization needs to sign to indicate that they will be covering for the costs associated with your attendance. Okay. The student, his pa a student or the student's parent, close relative may complete this and provide additional documentary proof. Now, um, types of financial documents accepted. Statement of bank accounts, checking and savings accounts are an acceptable proof of, it, of finances. FDs, government bonds maturing prior to the first term at the university or available for withdrawal anytime are considered. DMAT accounts that clearly state the specific, the specific balance available for withdrawal. Funds in any other kind of investment portfolios like Kisan, Vikas, Patra or any kind of investment uh, portfolios of this kind, FDs, recurring deposits are acceptable. Employers or unconditional scholarship letters issued by the organization which is going to vouch to take care or cover all your expenses during your education is absolutely a very valid proof. And any approved education loans, so a loan sanction, unconditional loan sanction letter from the bank, whether it's Indian or American, is acceptable as a financial document. Now, uh, having talked about the proof of finances, you once you've submitted your proof of finances, then you, you, you get what is called your I-20. You request for an I-20. Now, an I-20 is a certificate of eligibility on non-immigrant student status. Uh, when you are accepted to a service certified US school, you will require an I-20. It's an official three-page document mailed or posted to you by university of your choice. Request for an I-20 only from a university you wish to attend. Do not collect multiple I-20s. If there is a university that requests you to accept their offer of admission earlier than another university uh, you know, that you're waiting to hear from, what you need to do is you need to request the first university to extend your deadline of uh, you know, giving them uh, you know, a deposit uh, of kind um, to to, to complete your application formalities. You can request them to extend that deadline while you're waiting for another I-20 uh, from another US university. So you can write to the university and say, thank you for admitting me to this amazing program at, at the Department of Electrical Engineering. Um, I would need uh, to, I, I am awaiting decisions from some other universities and their scholarship decisions. Therefore, would it be possible to extend my deadline for another 15 days? till the, say, 20th of May 2017. And in most cases, universities would allow you to do that and would accept it. 
right so this is how the first page of an i20 looks like it includes the name of the student it includes the name of the issuing university uh, it includes the designated school official or the main person you're kind of who's going to be signing this letter for you who, who have he would who would sign this letter and send it to you it includes your student exchange visitor information system ID which is a unique ID that every student gets international student gets the school code the program of study the program start and end date the evidence of English proficiency expenses of studying in the US for the calendar year and the students mean means of support means of financial support these are all the aspects that will be listed so make sure your name is spelled correctly make sure that the program of study in the US is correctly mentioned if there are any changes to the I-20 it would be highly recommended that you write to the university and get those corrected So what are some of the other things you can do? You can learn about medical insurance. Check the different your medical insurance plans offered by your university. Check, the, check with the university whether the, they would accept insurance policies taken from India. Look at, the, look at those insurance policies on offer. Compare. See uh, how long will it get, take for you to actually uh, get um, you know, refunded for any expense you make if you take an Indian insurance. And make that decision very, uh, talk to other students, talk to your university, talk to other Indian students or cu current Indian students who are already studying at that university. Talk to them on Facebook or talk to them on some kind of an online platform that the university has facilitated for you. Connect with student ambassadors. Come for Education USA's pre-departure orientations and discuss this with uh, alumni and other resource people who will be there. Prepare documentation to apply for your visa interview. Your I-20 or DS-2019 should be with you. Familiarize yourself with the F-1 student visa process, a student visa that most of you would be applying for. Check for your passport's validity. Update your passport. Needs to be current and valid. Avoid delays. Follow up as soon as possible. Make sure your social media profiles don't have any offensive material on them, any offensive graphics or any kind of offensive comments. Please make sure you delete that from your social media profile because you know you're going to go to a university you'll meet lots of people there and they would probably be checking be, be adding you on your different social media whether it's FB Twitter Instagram or snapchat or whatever have you you know they would be looking they would be connecting with you so it makes sense to have a good profile to have a kind of a profile that does not have any objectionable material on it Your visa session with the embassy. Um, so the, at the Education USA office in Delhi, for example, this is just an example of the New Delhi office because I'm conducting this webinar from New Delhi. Uh, every Education USA center across India has a schedule of ve webinars, um, has a schedule of visa sessions they would be conducting at their center. So for the same, you can check out the Education USA website, educationusa.state.gov. And you can also check out the USIEF website to see the visa sessions uh, that are being offered by different centers. If you cannot get up-to-date information after checking the portals, please do call up the center and request an advisor to let you know about the different visa ses sessions scheduled. I'd like to highlight that on 12th May 2017, we have a webinar conducted by a US, student, a US visa consular officer who's going to talk to students about the student visa process. These are actually people who are behind the the window and who interview you for your visas this is a virtual session on the same link that you've logged into today it's 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 a Friday webinar from 4 to 5 p.m. next next Friday uh, please log in on this link and talk to hear them talk and get your questions answered the rest of them are uh, the visa sessions in Delhi See, the other things you can do, identify social media links for prospective students, example, College Confidential, Grad Cafe. Not all the information in the cyber world is true, but you can kind of get to know and understand. Upgrade your skills, get your international driving license if you're interested in driving while you're in the US. Um, you know, um, review your existing college list. Have you considered, um, have you got admissions? Do you think you would like to, you'd like to apply for admissions for spring? Um, so get get a hang on all of these things after you've submitted your applications. It might be too late to apply to other schools right now, but if you're considering spring, then you need to 
research about schools, other schools in the US. Before you travel, get in touch with the International Students Office, on campus and off campus housing. Uh, figure out how you will reach the university. Is there a facility through which, or there are shuttles that run between the nearest uh, airport and your university? What is the way to get, get down, get to your university? Of course, you can Uber it, but if it's a slightly rural campus, what, what is the way to actually get to your campus? Get, get, get an understanding on, on that. Um, you know, uh, get converters for your electronic devices so they work in the U.S. Um, it may not be able, it may not be a very wise idea to do all your shopping in terms of your clothes from India because the clothing requirement in the U.S. could vary, and uh, you know it's best to look out for sales and buy stuff in the U.S. But you could carry some basic clothing from here so that you're protected from the cold if you are if you're traveling to a cold city or a state. Um, start look comparing the airline tickets and you know allowances. Look at uh, the look at the stopovers. Uh, look at all of that. Um, uh, work on on your diction if you think your English needs improvement. Uh, these are some of the things you can work on uh, before you travel. Carry some Indian clothes to the campus as well because there are some cultural days and evenings, so you may have to. You may want to participate in them, and carrying some Indian clothing definitely will, will, will be useful. Last but not the least, contact advisors at the Education USA Centers. I, I contact advisors at, at USA Centers located at USIEF and in other organizations for information and advice on accepting university or college offers, formalities of admission, visa counseling and student visa sessions, and a pre-departure orientation session which are an absolute fabulous way of getting to know about how to make the most of your time in the United States. In Delhi, for example, we hold the visa sessions, the pre-departure orientation sessions at the American Center at Kasturba Gandhi Mark. We, our first video is going to be held in June and another one in July. Um, so uh, get to talk to them and register for the PDOs. Uh, they're a great way to connect with alumni, current students, hear Fulbrighters, uh, listen to uh, Department of Homeland Security representatives, and really get ready for your US higher ed experience. Some pointers, use your time wisely, concentrate on your test exams, but if, you, if you're in your final years, have your plan B in place. What are the other options open for you, if not the US? Be optimistic and patient while you wait for your admits and review your applications. Uh, you know, remember that application reviews are a long and slow process. Right, so these are the services that Education USA at USF centers and other centers across India offer. Uh, you know, these are, there are a wide range of services they offer, and services differ slightly from center to center. But if you're looking at the five Education USA at USF centers located in Delhi, Mumbai, Chennai, Hyderabad, Kolkata, uh, we have group information sessions on US higher education, presentations by US university representatives, and US higher education fairs. We have libraries, um, uh, library access, we have standardized test prep material, we have mentoring sessions by US University alumni and currently enrolled students. As I said, we have an absolutely fabulous pre-departure orientation session. Um, um, and for students who are members, they can get access to expanded hours per library and res library usage and resource usage. There are also one-on-one -on -one advising appointments for members. We also have a short-term membership plan through which we can help you with. We help you with the visa advising. Uh, we help you with university selection uh, and any other questions you may have before you depart for the U.S. These are our um, these are our social media platforms. It, the, our official website is educationusa.state.gov. Our Facebook page is is different from different center. For Delhi, it's facebook.com forward slash Education USA Delhi. So for Kolkata, it will be facebook.com forward slash Education USA Kolkata. So just uh, just fix the suffix the uh, name of the city to every uh, link. Um, and our Twitter handle, we have a national Twitter handle, which is twitter.com forward slash edusa underscore India. Thank you very much. So that's it for my end. I'm happy to answer your questions. If you can type them into the chat box, please.
how can you register for pre-departure orientation? So uh, that's a really good question, Ruth. Um, so I would say go to usif.org.in or educationusa.state.gov. On the USIF website, you have events and you have the name of the different cities listed. So if you click on Mumbai, you'll get, um, you'll, you'll get to know which are the pre-departure orientation dates. I'll just uh, give you the direct link while um, you, I need some other students ask questions. So it's on our home page. The list of um, events is on our home page. Usually, videos take place in June and July. So the Mumbai list of events I'm just sharing with you right now. Right. This is the Mumbai list of events. Um, you have a Rami has a good question. You said uh, you say uh, I since I got admitted, when should I work with my advisor in my courses? First of all, Rami, I would say just check out what are the different courses that are that you're going to, that you have on offer. So check out the university's website to see exactly what are your core courses, what are your elective courses, what are your specialization based courses, and have some kind of a plan. Uh, are you looking at an undergrad education or a grad education, a bachelor's or a master's? Graduate for a master's or PhD, master's, I'm guessing. Um, so uh, you need to you need you need to have an idea about what are the courses on offer. Contact your academic advisor if have if you have you already been given your academic advisor. If you have, you can email them and say that you know you know when you're on campus you'd like to meet them or schedule a Skype appointment or get some sense on how to go about choosing between this set of courses and that set of courses. This is what your goal is. You can request for an appointment when you're on campus and maybe you know during their open hours or with an appointment you can go and meet your professor or, and your student who may be your student advisor and uh, request them to help you with score selection. But you should first do a recce. You should first do an, uh, check on exactly what courses there are for you to uh, pursue. OK? I hope that answers your question. Um, if one gets selected and starts the process, OK, I think it does. If one gets selected and starts the process with the F1 visa at the same time, the student gets off a wait list from a higher ranked university. Does the student have to restart the entire process? Could you guide me through the process? See, you need to have an I-20 from the university. You need to get admission to, you know, you want to get admitted to. So if you want to get admitted to a university that, um, you know, you get your wait listed and then you hear back from the university then um, you need to get an I-20 from that university. If you've already finished the visa process, then you'll have to reapply for the visa process. But if you've not um, you know, gone ahead with the visa process, then you may not need to uh, reapply. OK. Uh, I would give you the US Embassy. I would also encourage you to check this with, um, um, you know, uh, with the visa officials. Um, and uh, uh, during the visa webinar next week, next Friday, I'll take a note of this question too. And you can ask them this question, you know. It's, it really depends on how far along you're on the visa process. There's also an email ID I'm sharing with you, support-india at ustraveldocs.com. This is the US Embassy's uh, helpline kind of email ID help. It's an email ID where you can put up questions. So you can write your exact question and also email them this question. I will also keep a tab on this question and make sure I check with the embassy when they, when they come in for the webinar. I hope that helps. My tuition fees. Um, will be waived and my stipend is 26500 per annum. I've heard in Omaha, Nebraska, all included all included cost of living is around $1,000. So my stipend will cover that. So what should be the proof of financial document? There's no proof of financial document you require. So you know, when you see your uh, I-20, um, you know, it clearly states, uh, it clearly states uh, the the, the total cost of the program and the funds. Where are the funds coming from? So in your case, the funds will be they'll show the funds are coming from the university. Um, that you know the tuition fees is covered by the university plus you're getting a stipend that totals to the total cost of attendance. 
and you wouldn't need really anything more than that. If there's a deficit, so suppose the cost of attendance is fifty thousand dollars, and twenty five thousand dollars is the is the tuition which the university is covering, and you know you're getting a stipend of twenty thousand dollars, so there is five thousand remaining that you have to cover. Then you'll have to show support of that five thousand dollars. But in case your stipend and your tuition uh, waiver or the tuition fee waiver is is covering the entire cost of attendance, then you don't need to show any additional cost of attendance. U.S. visa consular officers are U.S. citizens. They're, they've studied in the U.S. and they know that majority of PhD programs in the U.S. are funded completely. So your I-20 will speak for itself. Okay. There's another question that I missed that was asked by Arya. Is the fund available in Government Provident Fund, which is easily withdrawable? Acceptable. It is. I have seen parents use the GPF uh, as a as a means of uh, funding their children's education, and as long as the GPF cover letter states that the fund can be withdrawn any time, and there's going to be no penalty or there's going to be no problems in withdrawing the funds from this from this particular saving instrument, um, that should not be a problem. It should be acceptable. Um, so the student asked me about the PhD question. Which what what PhD program have you got admitted to at University of Omaha? Yeah, what program is Shikha Basu? Yes, exactly. Congratulations, first and foremost. I was curious to know what program you got funded. Uh, what program are you going to pursue? In which department? Yes. Oh, lovely. Fantastic. Congratulations. Can you hear me? Yeah, I wasn't talking earlier, so that's why you couldn't hear me. Right, any other questions before we close? Or I'd like to close today's session. Okay, I'll take one last question from Ruth. I have an I-20 from all four admits. Will that pose a risk for my visa process? Well, absolutely. Uh, I mean, you have to, you can only go ahead with one I-20. You can't go ahead with... Uh, multiple I-20s. You are only applying to one university. You, you will attend one university. So get the I-20. So when you're, when you're completing the DS-160 form, the visa form online, make sure that you're providing details for one university because, and those would be, uh, those would be on your I-20. So make sure you're going ahead with only one I-20. You can't go with multiple I-20s. You can only go ahead with one I-20. So make up your mind. Go to the Education USA at USIF Mumbai. Talk to your advisors. Make sure the office is open on that particular day because we have an upcoming holiday in at the Delhi office uh, on, on account of Buddha Purnima on Wednesday. Uh, so just check out the Mumbai office calendar on usif.org.in before you head to our office. Uh, just Give our center a call and go and meet an advisor about your admits if you have confusions. If you'd like to discuss the pros and cons of attending a particular university, go go and go and reach out to them. There's some very experienced, good advisors out there. All right, thank you so much. So you don't have to, one last question, Arya, you don't have to uh, for showing proof of evidence of the third and do I need to disperse the loan and show that I have the money in my account? No, you don't have to. It is enough to say, yes, it is enough to say that you have a plan of funding your education through a bank loan that has been sanctioned, but you don't need to actually get the monies in your bank until you need them because if you get the money beforehand, you would be paying interest for it. So you only need the bank sanction letter. And the disbursement can be done. The actual, you know, getting the money and getting that first trench into your account can happen later. Online courses, well, I talked about online writing courses. Request you to check out 
uh, Coursera, edX, and check on academic writing programs on these online courses. Or speak to your university. So if you're going to University of Iowa, talk to them and see if they have uh, any online courses. Um, you know that you would like. They would like you to, um, um, you know, take up before you go to the U.S. So you're better prepared. All right. Thank you so much for being a very patient um, audience. And it was a pleasure talking to all of you. Uh, I wish you all the best for your upcoming studies in the US. It's going to be a great experience, one you will cherish for the rest of your life. And, uh, that's, and do reach out to our Education USA centers all over India and get the information you need to, to make your dream in the US a reality. Bye-bye.